little time with me. Yes! The film starred Jane Horrocks as LV, an extremely shy girl with an incredible singing voice. The film has some big stars, Jane Horrocks, Michael Caine, Brenda Blethyn and, of course, Ewan McGregor. But what's really interesting is the huge part of the town and the people of Scarborough played in the making of the film. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares. Back in 1997, a disused holiday park was transformed into Mr. Boo's nightclub, which became the stage for one of the surprise hits of the year. The town was buzzing with excitement because Hollywood had come to Scarborough. The cast and crew were on location, and the filmmakers decided they could use the help of the people who knew the town best. You see, when a big production rolls into town, it's not unusual for the filmmakers to rope in the help of a few locals to help get things going, both on set and behind the scenes. And with little voice in Scarborough, it was all hands on deck. Rob Dixon, hi. Hi, John. Now, Rob, you were brought in to help build some of the sets, weren't you? Well, a colleague of mine was involved in, in some filming before this, and uh, he rang me up one day and said, would you like to, to uh, be in the film? And can you drive a truck? So I said, yes, I can drive a truck, and when do they need somebody? So he said, right, can you stay out on Sunday and go and pick a truck up for us? And Robert, you had any experience of building sets for the film before? Not at all, no. Uh, I'm quite sort of a handy person. And, but strangely enough, the first sort of four or five, six weeks, it was as if the film really wasn't going to happen. It, we were sort of a small team, about six, seven of us, and we were working in various locations. And it was a bit of a non-event, as if, is it really going to happen? And then, of course, what happened was the, um, the whole team descended. Uh, and all of a sudden, the town was taken over by camera crews and, and, and stars. And uh, the reality of what was going to happen then struck home, you know. Looking back, Rob, was it, was it a great experience? Indeed it was. It was quite, a, quite an experience in my life. Um, it's something that I don't think I'll ever forget. There's no business like show business like no business I know. At the time of filming, Little Voice was the only show in town. And the filmmakers pulled a masterstroke when they decided to hold open auditions for extras at a local hotel. Most of the town turned up. The great, the good, the young, the old, all hoping to land a part alongside the stars. And more importantly, the bond between film and town was cemented, with local people getting their chance to shine. Frank. You were one of a number of local people brought in as extras. I bet the casting sessions were the talk of the town. That's right, absolutely. Uh, the town was alive with uh, Michael Caine and other men stars. It was magic. So, Frank, how did you get roped into the film in the first place? Well, it was very easy, and that's a fact. It was... Uh, I was decorating a room one day, and uh, on the local radio came extras wanted for Rise and Fall of Little Voice. And uh, I applied, alongside many others. I went down with me painting overalls on, and I said, we've a small part with you. I went on to the set. The assistant director is shouting, Frank, Frank. And I was the Frank he wanted. He introduced himself as Jonathan, the assistant director. Or then, then introduced me to uh, the main director, uh, Mark Herman, who then introduced me to Michael Caine. You enjoyed it so much, it, it started a whole new si sideline, didn't it? Well, that's right. It, it's, I went from there to uh, my next one. Uh, I went to a small budget movie called um, The Dancer. It was for Channel 4, and uh, it was actually changed to Billy Elliot. Uh, I was lucky again. I wanna be loved by you. It wasn't only Frank that caught the casting director's eye. There were a handful of bigger parts up for grabs for a few lucky locals. 
blow on, but you, you had a cracking little speaking part, didn't you? Yes, I did. Now, the, the, there must have been a real buzz around the town at the time of the filming. Yes, there was. There was a lot of interest because of a lot of famous people that had come here and the fact that it was being filmed in Scarborough. Yeah, yeah, the town was buzzing. How did, he, how did you get the part? How did you become this international film star? I was invited to read for the part by um, an entertainment company, a local entertainment company that I was working for at the time. So I went to their offices, quite a lot of other people there, read for the part. A few weeks later, got a phone call to say that the part was mine. I, I bet you were thrilled when you got it. Absolutely delighted, yeah, over the moon. Yeah, I couldn't believe it, because apart from anything else, I've always been a great admirer of Michael Caine and his work. And to actually be in a production that he's involved in, and see your name come up at the end, you know, with Michael Caine, it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I loved it. Did you have your own Winnie Bago and that sort of thing? Uh, not quite, no, no. I had sort of like half a porter cabin. Can you um, run us through what you had to do in your line? Yeah. Um, I played the part of uh, George, who was played by Philip Jackson. I played his girlfriend. And um, I called him a not very nice name and um, inflicted a small injury on him. I see. Are you allowed to say what that name was at uh, this time I on a Sunday? I don't think I am. don't think I am at this time on a Sunday, no. <laughs> <laughs> now then, I thought you were showing up here sooner or later. You going in? Eh, uh, it's hello. Hello, you must be George's wife. Wife? You. <laughs> Sorry, George. Sorry. And how long did it take to shoot your scene? My particular scene? Well, I was only there for a day. Um, not that long, really, probably about four or five hours, which actually is quite a long time just for one line. Many of the film's locations have sadly gone. Little Voice's house, one of the central locations of the film, was demolished shortly after filming finished and is now the local Samaritans. Mr Boo's nightclub was flattened to make way for part of Scarborough's redevelopment. But even though the buildings may have gone, the soul of this classic film is still very much alive and well in Scarborough. A fantastic script and cast ensured that Little Voice would become a hit, but it had one more trick up its sleeve. Great tunes. It's a well-known fact that the fantastically talented Jane Horrocks sang all of the songs herself, but behind every great singer, there's usually a great band, and I'm joined here now by Mike Linsky, one of the actual band members. Now, Mike, this is where you actually played, isn't it? Yeah, this was the first first shot that we did, uh, right on the very first day, this is where we shot, and so uh, Michael Caine up at the top there, yeah. Hey, forget your troubles, come on, get happy. Chase your gears away. Hallelujah, get happy. Before the judge... Scarborough was a small place, so we all knew each other anyway. We all played in different bands together, but it wasn't a real big band that played. It was just everybody that we knew that would all, you know, cram in and make it look really good. But, uh, yeah, we didn't really know what to expect at all. Uh, we were just taken down the pub, rehearsed, told it was going to be a film, didn't know who was in it, and then thrown into it, really. Now, Mike, the film's set in Scarborough, it was filmed in Scarborough. Was it a great source of pride to Scarborough? Um, I think... Most of Scarborough wanted to be in it, and I think most of Scarborough auditioned for it as well, because they, they held big open auditions at a hotel in Scarborough. Um, and, yeah, I think it was a pride thing, because we had big actors in town, which never happens. You know, you've got Michael Caine and Ewan McGregor wandering around the streets of Scarborough and going to the pubs and things like this, which, you know, we never get. weird thing was that, because uh, everybody knew somebody that was in the film in Scarborough, that everybody watched it, so you knew in Scarborough it was a huge thing, you know, but it's not until sort of Michael Caine and uh, Brenda Blethyn were up for awards for it that you actually realise that other people outside the town have seen it. And you never expect that it's going to be on ten years later on TV at Christmas and things like that. And it keeps coming to bite you every... You get a phone call every time it's on going, I've seen you on TV again. <laughs> now, Scarborough is now an international star, is it, Mike? Well, of course. I mean, unfortunately, the, the club that we filmed that was pulled down about two years after they filmed it and the Little Voices house was pulled down about six months after it was used. So a lot of the sets aren't there anymore. But obviously this place is here and uh, just the Scarborough being generally beautiful is here all the time. So. Well, Mike, I see you've brought along your trumpet. Do you want to give us a blast? <laughs> well, my opinion... It was Scarborough and the people of Scarborough that helped make Little Voice such a huge success. And coming up, how Scarborough is the star not only of the big screen, but also the small, with a drama that dominates Sunday night viewing.
Hello, and welcome back to Light's Camera Location. And here I am, still in Scarborough. Because not only has this town been the star of the big screen, with the hit film Little Voices we've just seen, but it's also the star of the small screen, as a location for one of the most popular dramas on television. Somebody help me, yeah. Somebody help me now. Won't somebody tell me what I've done? The Royal is filmed right here in Scarborough. It's a spin-off from Heartbeat, which is set further inland in the North York Moors. Now, like Heartbeat, The Royal is set in the swinging 60s, but this drama revolves around a hospital. And the hospital set is here in Scarborough. It's easy to see why the producers chose Scarborough. It's a perfect example of a northern seaside town. We're all going on a summer holiday. No more working for a The nostalgic setting and in particular, this stunning building, which stars at St. Aidan's Royal Free Hospital, is the centrepiece of the fictional town of Elsinby. Let's take a look at how this drama, which dominates Sunday night viewing, started out. This is the very first episode, which hit our screens back in January 2003. Hello, excuse me. Go on, I'm not deaf. Where can I park? Your patient or visitor? Neither. Oh. I'm here for an interview. Oh, well, I reckon you can park in one of the doctor's spaces over there. Thanks. It must be mad to want to work here, yeah? Good luck. Now, we all know this as a main entrance to the Royal, but Mary Colbeck, you know this best as your own front door, don't you? Yes, of course I know. <laughs> <laughs> And how long has the Royal filmed here? Uh, since 2002. So, Mary, is it, it much, much of an inconvenience having the Royal filming here? Well, it is a little bit of inconvenience, but uh, it's minimal, really. If, if we want to come out and they're not filming, we can come out. Or if they are filming, we can go out through the back door and across the garden. So we're not really inconvenienced a lot. And, um, Mary, I've just been having a chat with your husband. He was telling me about the history of the building. What was this building when it was first built? It was uh, a f the second home of a very wealthy man. And he used to come here for about six or seven weeks a year. And our flat was the governess's apartment. And I believe he did something to alter his view. Oh, yes. Across the road, there was a, a row of cottages but he wanted that down, so he pulled them down, and that's Shuttleworth Gardens now. <laughs> that was his garden. <laughs> so, um, Mary, how do you feel when you see your own front door there on the television? Well, we've got used to it now. <laughs> you know, we enjoy it. We, we, we enjoy having them here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've just seen a lot of people taking photographs of your front door. Does that bother you? Well, no, it doesn't really. But uh, occasionally we get one or two awkward customers. And we get, I had a lady came to the door wanting the doctor and can you tell me where the surgery is? I said, I'm sorry, there isn't one. Said, oh, yes, yes, I, wa I want the doctor. And I had to, she was, she was very persistent. But anyway, I got rid of her. <laughs> but uh, yes, we do get a lot of uh, people. So, does she want the real doctor? No, she wanted Dr. Romerod. <laughs> no, she wanted the, the, the doctor. Did you manage to get hold of Rose? Matron's still trying. I'm Dr. Ulmrod. Mr. and Mrs. Russell. Well, perhaps I can get some sense out of you. How come Dr. Olway couldn't come out to see her himself? Well, I'm afraid he's unwell. Just leave her to us. So, Katie, here we have your lovely Muse cottage, but what's, what's this in the Royal? This is the entrance for the um, ambulances to come into for casualty. So, um, they come up Holbeck Road, turn into here, and down into the yard. So, and I can see 
uh, clearly because I peep out of my bathroom window to watch them. Where's your bathroom window? Just up there. It must be quite exciting, Katie, having them all come here. Yes, it is. It's very exciting. And it's uh, very interesting to watch them because there are so many people involved, a lot of crew, and they all are always very, very busy. And in your opinion, do you think it's a good thing for Scarborough that it's set here? Oh, most definitely. Um, we have lots of people come to, to check that it is the right place, the Royal, and, um, and everybody speaks very highly of Scarborough as well as coming here to, if they're you know, keen uh, viewers of the programme, um, and then they stay in Scarborough and say how much they enjoy it. Well, shall we go down and listen to the music? Yeah. Scarborough's not a huge place, but the locations are dotted all over the town. And this is Neil Maiden, who has a job of driving the stars from location to location. Neil, it sounds like a dream job, driving celebrities around. It is, John. It's a real joy. Uh, it brightens up our day when we have... It's more or less like a carnival that comes to town when the royal family come to the town. And over the uh, three years that I've done it, I've got to know the uh, actors, the supporting artists, the crew, and uh, it's like I uh, did get complimented and I got told that I was part of the royal family. Uh, now, Neil, this must be a step sideways from your job normally as a driver. Uh, how different is it to, to, from how you expected it to be working on the royal? Working on the royal, is, uh, it opens your eyes to how things are, are done. I mean, this programme is a period drama and uh, just the effort that goes into going back to the 60s, uh, it's not just, uh, just the people who were makeup and everything to look like the 60s. It's the street what we're in now. This is one of the main runs of where the Royal is in the background. And they have to change the whole street, more or less. You know, the clock tower, they have to alter the time for the time of day, what they're filming. And just little details of, of things that normally me and you wouldn't recognise. OK, so it's hard work, it's an extremely long day, but is it something you look forward to? It is, yeah, because when the Royal is actually filmed on TV and you see things that... I was there. I was there when that was getting filmed. And uh, I know myself that I know how it's done. I know all the little tricks of the trade that they use and everything. And when the Royal do come, it's, it's like a sort of like... The parties come to town, you know, you, all the people in the town, they're, they're real excited. All the holiday makers, they're all standing around watching to view, and it's the same feeling for them. When they go home, they can say, I saw that happen. You know, when it's on the TV on the Sunday night, they're, they're there and it's like a little chuckle you have to yourself because you were actually there when they were filming that and you can see how they did it. More than just a trip down memory lane, the Royal brings together all you'd expect from a top drama and prides itself on realistic stunts. You can't have a hospital drama without any action, and some of the Royal's more complicated stunts would rival any Hollywood blockbuster, but sometimes the show has to leave Scarborough in order to find the perfect location. Let's get moving! Come on! You're not scared of the dog, are you, Frankie? <laughs> Don't be dark. Mind you, I didn't think you meant this dark. How far along is it? Not far. Just round here and a bit of a clamber. You all right with ice, are you? Yeah. Yeah, fine. Now, clearly, there aren't many caves near Scarborough, so they had to go a little further afield. And I'm joined here now by the chap who helped find that location and helped with the logistics of the filming. Steve Finch, how do you do? Hi. Now, presumably, the film crew didn't want to go too far away from Scarborough. They wouldn't want to go trekking up to Scotland or Wales. So how did you help find that location? Yeah, well, fortunately, you can't move caves. Um, the cave is in Yorkshire, but it is into the Dales. And what was it like working with a film crew who presumably aren't experienced cavers themselves? They're not. Um, you do have to keep your wits about you. We, we have to manage their health and safety. We have to make sure that the filming takes place authentically, and it was period. We also have to look after the crew on the other side of the camera. And I would assume as well you need the right sort of cave, big enough to get everyone in. Yeah, we need a cave which is big enough to get people in, 
um, easy logistically to, to manage the filming, but equally we do want the right location. So we want something that looks authentically like a, a difficult cave. Um, was it difficult getting the lighting in, the crew in? And... It isn't as difficult as it may seem. Um, we, we plan it. Um, we choose a location where we can do that. We detail the sort of equipment that's needed and the number of people that are needed. And if you plan it, it's not that difficult. Tommy, we're going to get you out of here. Tommy! Stop! Oh! Tommy, you have to stay awake. Can you hear me? OK. Take it red, take it black. Take it red, take it black. We're going to get you out of here, Tommy. Not long now. A dramatic ending. And talking of endings, that's it for this edition of Lights, Camera, Location. Join us again next time, when we'll be putting more film and television locations in the spotlight.